Thank you for watching Retro Tech. Please like and subscribe. Shh. Hi, welcome to Retro Tech. Today I want to talk about one of the more commonly asked questions on a lot of my videos, and that's Steve, how do I really get started into either repairing old electronics, uh, maybe working on a CRT, and even just getting my feet wet in electronics repair and using uh, soldering equipment? So for today's video, I'm specifically focusing on the equipment side. This is a completely starter set I've put together of tools for anybody who has little to no tools in this with soldering um, or electronics repair and also anybody who maybe just has no knowledge and wants to get started with electronics repair. First, let's go take a look at the tools. Okay, everybody, so the goal again today is to create a kit for somebody who's pretty much completely new to soldering and doesn't want to go spend a huge amount of money investing in the higher end tools. So today's goal is to keep this kit at about $70 or under. So that's our goal. The first item I want you to take a closer look at is this Weller soldering iron. This is about a $15 pack right here. This soldering iron has a nice indicator light for when it's heating up. Um, it does take a few minutes to heat up when you turn it on. However, it does get up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an important temperature for soldering. It includes things like a couple of spare tips, a little bit of solder, which I'm sure is low quality and I will not be using. But there you go for a $15 kit. It's not too bad. Now folks, please make sure you stick with me today because I've got a great demo at the end of this video where I'll show you pretty much every one of these tools in action. Our next thing to focus on is going to be a set of electrical pliers. These small little pliers or tweezers are very helpful. They're very cheap too, only $3 a set, so you definitely want to get a set of those. You'll also want to purchase a decent pair of snips. These pliers are flush cutters, and you can see there's an angle to the actual snip end. You want to look for something that looks like this to do electrical solder work. Next, I want to show you the pump. This is the desoldering pump. It retails for about $22 shipped. Uh, it's kind of like the cheaper soldering iron where the tip just has to get really hot after about 15 minutes and then you tip the end of that hole right there into the point where you want to suck solder from and there's a little vacuum pump which is manual down here um, towards the handle of this tool and you just squeeze it to uh, get air out and then let it go and you can suck up that solder as it heats up on the tip here. Another positive thing about this sucker is there are replacement tips for it, so you're not going to have to throw it away once the tip wears out, which will happen after you use this a few times. Now let's look at something else that's very important. I don't want you to skip on your price on this. I want you to spend maybe 10 bucks on some good flux. This is not really that great of flux, but you can get good flux pens or tacky flux. Any type of flux, I'll link to a few below. You want to invest a little bit more in that because that's going to actually help you with your solder bond. And speaking of solder, let's look at what kind of solder you want to try to get. Here's a look at what I use, which is Alpha Fry. Again, I don't want you to buy low quality uh, solder or flux because that's really what you're trying to build your um, joints and your connections with are some nice uh, nice solder and you don't want to have low quality solder to deal with along with low quality tools. I have a link below to a reel of solder that's about ten dollars. Next I want to show you what kind of ribbon I like to use for mods now. This is a ribbon wire and this spool will cost you about ten dollars as well. This isn't really part of the kit but I want to show you in case you want to get wires to make any kind of modification or repair this is a great wire to use and it's only again about ten dollars. Last thing I need to show you is somewhere to place your soldering iron or basically clean the tip. This is from my HACO unit, so you won't be getting this one most likely, but you'll get something similar to this. They're about five to $10 on average, and it's got a Brillo pad in here to clean the tip, as well as a little sponge usually that you dampen to clean the tips of your soldering tools so that they don't um, have solder just left on them and wear out over time. Okay, so there's our entire kit, and I need to reiterate, this is not top quality tools, but it's a good place to start 
for anybody new to soldering. After we've had a quick look at the tools, let's talk about some of the more common jobs we can work on with this sort of a setup. So one of the first things we'll be able to practice is small electronics repair as well as solder reflow. So if there's any kind of a situation where you need to reflow solder on something or just you have a break, you'd be easily able to fix that with even just a small cheap soldering iron like this and these other tools that we had talked about. Something else you could do is you could start uh, capacitor replacements and other small part replacements. It's easily done with this and the soldering tool and everything else we have here. You can easily pull components on most devices if you properly uh, reflow solder and then even use this pump and just take your time and properly do it. Most of the time on some of these smaller jobs that will work perfectly fine. Other things we can do is we can salvage parts from old consoles or um, other devices where there might be rarer parts or parts that contain things like if you wanted to try to salvage gold out of it or silver or some other type of uh, precious metal or even if you just need something like chips out of something um, and then lastly once you start getting your feet wet and some practice um, you can go into doing things like console repairs and modifications uh, today I promised a demonstration so we're gonna work on an old Nintendo uh, this is a front-loading board. Now this board is not going to be repaired. I've already salvaged a lot of parts out of it. Okay, so we're going to go through and we're going to remove this chip so that I can prove the, you know, the, the durability and usability of these tools. Go ahead and get started. We're going to pull this chip. All right, thanks for sticking around because you made it to the demo. First, here's the tip of the soldering iron. I have to let this get nice and hot. I'm using the chisel tip. Let it sit there till it turns nice and bronze colored and you know it's really warm. It also has an indicator light on there. So for the next two minutes, why don't you just enjoy some wonderful 80s tunes and watch this solder reflow. Well, after that epic solder reflow, we're ready to start using our desoldering tool. And again, this is the ECG soldering iron with the soldering sucker built into it. And this too needs to heat up for about 15 minutes before you can use it. I always try to use a little flux with it again and go over those solder points. And pretty much you're just trying to heat up that pin 
and you use this sucker and you just squeeze out the solder once you've sucked it in. Make sure it's flat and push it against the pin and let it go and it'll suck that solder out. You have to be very careful when doing this because you can damage the board if you push down too hard or push against a trace or the metal um, actually on the board. This desoldering tool is not extremely forgiving, to be quite honest, but it does work. After I suck some of this solder out of these holes, I like to take my tweezers and go back and check the pins. And sometimes they're still stuck, so you have to flow new solder on the pins again and just try to re-suck them until you get them broken free. I finished pulling the chip. Here it is. I'm going to let you see a closer look at it. But I was able to pull the chip and all I did was use the tools that we discussed today. Now. I do have also the motherboard here and I'm going to zoom in close on the areas here because there was one spot that I still managed to damage when pulling that chip. However, these tools will work. I can, again, I said for most smaller mods, but when you have a more tiny uh, things to pull like these pins, it's very tricky. Uh, I had to use this pump and go over some of these spots three and four times and I even had to add fresh solder on a couple spots and again and and re-suck them but I just wanted to show you that it is possible but it is very difficult so you know stuff like the NES mods are going to be better left for people that have the higher end equipment it's much easier with the professional hacko equipment but let's go now and take a closer look at this board first and then the chip Here's the top of the Nintendo board where our CPU was. The third pin on the top side was the one that was pulled along with the chip. It stuck to the chip and there's a small trace there so that may need to be repaired if you were going to reuse this board. The rest of the holes look pretty good on the top side. If I flip over to the bottom, you can see how some of these pads, even though I was very precautious, still took a little bit of damage from that tip on the desoldering tool so you have to be very careful not to try to touch that too long to the board let's take a look at our chip real quick this is the whole reason i did this salvage job was to salvage this chip and i can take this chip now um, it's working in good condition i'll put it on ebay and it will sell for about 16 dollars shipped usually so there you have an example of how to make some money back from salvaging parts well, there we have it, everyone, the $80 soldering kit. Again, very good for salvaging parts and making small repairs. If you did something like change a, just a couple capacitors with something like this, it would be quite easy. However, doing more complicated jobs like removing the CPU and PPU, for example, out of a Nintendo motherboard is a little bit more difficult and can lead to, uh, even with the most precautious modder, a little bit of damage. However, it is a good starting point because it's quite cheap and you can still do a lot if you just take your time and it's also a great way to get experience. That way you could eventually later on move on to some of the higher end Hakko and other brands of equipment. Please let me know what you think with a comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. My name's Steve. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech and have a great day.